You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. And now for the first time, we are bringing to you the full story of what happened on that fateful day. This summer, this summer, this summer, this summer, this summer, this is Film Sack. Oh, sure. Hey everybody, welcome back to Film Sack. This is Film Sap Sack. <laughs> Sappy Sack. It's Film Sack episode 14 and uh today is a great day for another Film Sack episode. We take the weirdest movies we can find out there on Netflix streaming and other sources and we watch them and we come to you and sort of express ourselves in ways that you can't imagine. Uh, joining me today for the festivities are the usual bunch. Let's start with Mr. Brian Ibbett. Hey, Scott. As soon as I finish up investigating this uh, flying saucer and cemetery business, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go teach gun safety to kindergartners. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm with you. I do, too. We have some good <laughs> trivia about that, actually. Also, that other voice you hear is Mr. Brian Dunaway. Hi, I'm in charge of saucer field activities. And no, that's not a bed sheet behind me whipping in the wind. It's the horizon. <laughs> now stop looking at it and use your imagination. Wow, I'd forgotten about yeah. that. Uh, and always, as always, bringing up the rear. Not always bringing up the rear, but in the rear today <laughs> anyway, is Mr. Uh, who, who have I forgotten? Randy Jordan. Randy Jordan, welcome to the show. Thanks, Scott. You know, last night <laughs> I saw a flying object that couldn't possibly be from this planet. <laughs> But I can't talk about it. I'm muzzled by army brass. I can't even admit, admit I saw the thing. Yeah. yeah. Army brass. Damn the brass. Army brass. I love that. All right. So you're saying to yourselves, I kind of know what they're talking about, but I'm not entirely sure. I may have seen this before. Let's let Scott Fletcher do the honors. Plan nine from outer space. After the embarrassing failure of the first eight plans, a group of evil aliens enact Plan 9, resurrecting the dead to take over the Earth. Bella Lugosi makes his final film appearance, along with Vampira, Tor Johnson, Chris Well, and a chiropractor acquaintance of director Ed Wood in one of the most popular cult classics of the 20th century. A two-time winner of the Golden Turkey Award for Worst Film and Worst Director of All Time. Hearing Scott Fletcher say it that way, it is interesting. Uh, we, you know, this is a classic. I was kind of intimidated myself uh, with this movie because it's been reviewed so many times by people who are, are really good reviewers, and uh, this is this is a staple of bad movies. Yeah, I think you can actually buy the collector's edition for yep. uh, this film, and it includes an alternate audio track or a commentary track from the Mystery Science Theater's Three Thousand Guys. Mm -hmm. Mystery Science Theater 3000, excuse me. There's not more That's than right. one theater. Um, <laughs> anyway, so so obviously this thing is ripe for that kind of treatment. Certainly it was uh, it's ripe for the sort of thing we do. Uh, but it's been much maligned over the years. There is a film arguably wouldn't exist without the inspiration of this very film and its writer and producer and director, Ed Wood, uh, Ed called Wood. Ed Wood. And it's a 19, when did that come out? 1994, I want to say. Uh, uh, was that the late? Look. Yeah, probably was. Yeah. Johnny Depp Sounds about right. starting it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got your Donnie, Johnny Depp action uh, in there. Bella, Bella Lugosi uh, reprised his role. <laughs> um, he barely had... It, it, I guess my, my big surprise here, and I'd seen parts of this way back in the past and yeah. didn't give it any extra thought. I just sort of knew it existed. This is my first real serious viewing of this movie. Yes, and indeed. I didn't know... Like I had, a, I, I had this assumption that Bella Lugosi was really... Like throughout the in, movie was really in, in, in the, the movie. movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it wasn't just like 90% of the time, according to some of this trivia, it's a guy yeah. with a towel over his head or, you know, a guy, I'm thinking of the wrong movie, the towel over his head, but yeah. it's a guy <laughs> holding a cape in front of his face and walking around trying to look like him. But for yes. most of this, the, like the footage where we actually have Bela Lugosi in the movie, it was, it was actually footage for another film that didn't yeah. get any backing and failed. 
So Ed Wood Dracula, was like Dracula of the Tomb or the Vampire Tomb like or some yeah something yeah like that. I think it was Vampire or, or Vampire of the Tomb. That sounds right. That's one of those. And that's the reason why down. you have that one shot where he's coming out of the tomb. And also, I don't know if this is in the trivia or not, but I kept wondering. I thought it was awfully suspicious the way they had to come out of the tomb and go. Why was the wife buried in the ground and he was buried in a tomb? Yeah. And it's like, oh, it's an old superstition. I'm like, that sounds really flaky. Like they had to push that in there. So well, why was his wife a, about a hundred years younger than him too? That's oh yeah, why was she way hotter? And well, I wouldn't really say hotter. Maybe <laughs> she's got that really weird skinny yeah. waist thing they did back then. You know what I'm talking about oh, the one yeah. that's like. <laughs> well, it's just funny like, that they that they had the forethought to say, oh, you know, people might might have a problem with this jump in logic why he's buried yeah. in the tomb and yeah. she's buried in the ground forget yeah. the whole rest of the movie this is the part people could have a problem <laughs> this, with this is the part people are going to get really confused <laughs> yeah no doubt about it so back to basics directed by of course edward d wood jr his full name he also wrote mm-hmm. it filmed in 1955 but released in 1959 because it took that long to get anyone to do anything with it was it i'm sorry um not to mean to correct you or anything, I may be wrong here. I thought it was filmed in 1957, 1957 was going to be released in 1958, had some capital problems, and was delayed until 1959. You may be correct on all counts. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know either. It's something they've that, all tried to forget. That sounds like something I made up. Yeah, <laughs> it may be. <laughs> so we have uh, Gregory Walcott as Jeff Trent, sort of our hero of the day. Um, yes. That guy ended up being kind of a cool dude. He was in a bunch of Clint Eastwood movies in the 70s. Yes. Way cooler and, than uh, he was in this. Did, did, didn't he also, um, didn't he make, um, am I giving all your trivia stuff away because fam tell me to shut up. <laughs> shut up, but, Brian. Um, no, didn't keep, that, keep didn't the guy also uh, have a special spot on the uh, that Ed Wood movie? Oh, yeah. He came back as a, as the financial backer who I guess is a, yeah. pre, uh, 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 shoot, a Baptist uh, preacher, I guess. Yeah. Who, I, remember for, I remember reading that when I watched Ed Wood. Not that long ago, because it, it was such an interesting. Uh, to me, it was a weird movie. But yeah, that was Johnny. Because it was originally called Crypt something. Let's see, did I write that down? Oh, uh, Grave Robbers from Outer Space. Grave Robbers from Outer Space, yeah, right? And they yeah, changed it yeah. because this preacher didn't feel good about the term or the the words grave robber. It had some sort of negative anti-religious kind of didn't tone. I know that. Yeah. So they changed it to Plan Nine, and hilarity ensued. <laughs> um, <laughs> So what I what I think is great about this is you've got um really interesting cast. I have to I mean this is this is where this movie shines for me in the crazy factor is that you've got a very popular uh wrestler at the time in the form of yes. Tor what's his last name? Johnson. Come Tor, on. Johnson, Tor, yeah, yeah, what am I Johnson, Johnson exactly. <laughs> I was gonna tough. say tore my pants, but oh you beat me to the Johnson. Um which by the way, there's an interesting piece of trivia about him. He wore a scar during the film when he was uh, zombie form. Yeah, uh, and, and by he also the way, had a I was, stroke apparently. Because... I was never buying that guy as, as a cop. <laughs> like a, I mean, it was all. Oh, yeah. Hello, what? Where is the crime scene? And we and we have some stuff to play from that. But he was Inspector you know, Dan. But apparently, according to the trivia, he had this scar, this fake scar on his face that they kept moving around every day because it caused a skin irritation. So there's <laughs> like multiple scenes where his scar is like in a yeah. totally different place on his face, which is great. Dude, makeup back in the day used to be so much more dangerous than it is now. I mean, <laughs> I mean, all the way back to Wizard of Oz and, you know, the silver paint. Oh, that yeah. The Jed toxic Clampett, stuff they rubbed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That Jed Clampett couldn't wear so he couldn't be the Tin Man. <laughs> all that stuff. Also a big What's fan that? of uh, Dudley Manlove. He played the part of Eros. You can't beat a name like Dudley Manlove. <laughs> I know. That's the worst. Randy, you were about to say something. I cut you off. I was going to say that that uh, makeup used to be so dangerous and so uh, you know, toxic that mm-hmm. as late as 1964 in the making of the film Goldfinger, uh, Honor Blackman had a really hard time with being covered yeah. in, in gold makeup to, to the point that she flat out refused to let the part of her body that you wouldn't be seeing in a shot <laughs> be covered with the with the gold Which makeup. I mean, much. And they did I think they did a um <laughs> they did a, a Mythbusters episode based on that where they they yeah. covered Jamie Jamie Heineman to see what it would do to him and it really mm-hmm. goofed him up. Like he got his yeah. heart rate went up and had all these like oh, weird wow. palpitations. That was and, that was psychosomatic though. That guy's crazy. Well that's <laughs> true. And he wore probably wore that stupid hat the whole time. <laughs> um, all right, so moving on, a couple other cast issues. Nobody really of any note is in this, but it, it is important to know that his chiropractor is in the film, and I just thought that's great. Yes, yes. I couldn't figure great. out who that, that is, though, is the problem. 
Like That's I can't. Bella Lugosi. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was Bella Lugosi's car, chiropractor, and it was like they they have the full cast. I found it on IMDb, but I can't find who he played. He and played the double of Bella, didn't he? Did he not? Is that not? I don't think so. No, that's exactly right. That's that's is that it, right. That's yes. It, yes, he Damn has it. no he has no lines. His job was to be the the fill in guy for the scenes where they needed Bella Lugosi's character, but didn't have Bella Lugosi. Yeah, and the Which whole was almost you know, the whole movie. <laughs> the, 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 the humor about that is that he's not the same size and shape as Bella Lugosi. No, not even close. Yes. Oh, no. He's taller. So even, looks totally different. And since when do zom- hair. Yeah, since when do zombies walk around with like uh, capes like that? That was great. That was so, f- which I thought was kind of clever because I'm like, you know, Bella Lugosi at this point had been known for doing that type of shtick, that whole, uh, you know, cover his face up with the with with the robe kind of thing. Well, yeah, he was Dracula, so man. It kind it kind of worked. Eh, I mean, if that had been anybody else, he would have totally went. Why the crap is he? covered himself up but you know it was kind of that, that thing in other ways it was Bella very did. sad and difficult to watch because you realize this is his last movie yeah and what a piece of trash to go out on and, well, and his, his last movie not by his choice yeah you know? exactly he, right he probably if you told him before he died hey what do you want to do with that uh you know that footage we never used he would have said burn it you know he wouldn't yeah. have wanted it i i'm i can't speak for the guy but I, you know it's not it wasn't his decision for his last film to be this piece of crap. My favorite yeah. actor and favorite character was Danny D. Meering, who played Danny, excuse me, David Danny, D. Danny Meering, boy. played Danny, the co-pilot on this horribly yeah. fake plane. <laughs> Danny boy. That guy was the worst actor ever, and it turns out is the only is the first of only two movies he ever did in his lifetime. So Sad but true. I was hoping you were going to say he was the chiropractor, because that would have been just... No, no, no. Perfect. This is a, they, they kept calling him Danny boy and all this other stuff, and it was... Yeah, his acting was was right on par with the rest of the acting in the movie. That's four fifteen, uh, and there's the San Fernando Valley right there out the window, <laughs> right on time. Yeah, that is true. So he was using it, one of those old Ma Bell, Andy <laughs> Griffith phones, like stapled to it, like like bolted to his chest. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, this brings up the question. You know, those horrible airplane scenes bring brings no. up the question about about whether or not this movie is is an attempt by the filmmaker makers i don't know dude does, does it really require more than one crazy person to make no. these movies <laughs> no. but yeah. is, is yeah. there is there a conscious attempt by the filmmaker to make mistakes and have fun in in doing so i don't know, you know? i mean if you if all you need to make a movie in 1959 is a washed up heart attack ridden wrestler <laughs> some old footage of someone who's dead and your own chiropractor <laughs> it just seems hey, like don't, don't get don't forget Vampira. I'm oh sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. And wasn't yeah. she now? Who now? Someone yeah. tell me who she is. Because I, I didn't realize there was really a Vampira or Vampira. Yeah, really? Vampira. She. I yeah. really didn't. I thought she was a uh, a comic book character from the 40s and 50s. So did I. I had no idea. So this this, this chick was real. Is she like the one that's yes. on TV now with the huge boobs? No, no, no that's, El- that's Elvira, derivative El- of Vampira. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vamp- Elvi- Elvira didn't personally steal Vampira stick. It was stolen for her by a television station in Los Angeles. Yes. Mm-hmm. But it, there's still the fact that Elvira is the, uh, you know, is the carry along of the character that this this actress is named. Uh, is, her proper name is Myla Nurmi. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, she just died like a year and a half ago. Yeah, and wow. uh, oh, yeah. Vampire. Yep. Vampire was always claimed, and there's no there's no evidence that I've ever seen. But even Samantha brought this up while we were watching this movie. There's always this claim that she had ribs removed so that she could fit into the I've smallest corsets imaginable. Well, I, I you know what? That's the first thing that jumped out at me. I actually watched this movie with Nick, and he yeah. looks up to me and he goes, "Dad, what's what wrong the- with her waist?" <laughs> and I went, "Oh." I don't know because that looks like <laughs> fancy CG effects. Like, wh- how do they do that to this chick? So you think that's true that there's ribs gone? No proof. I wouldn't think that in the '40s you could have uh, you, you would be you would feel safe with such a surgery. No, yeah. Oh, no, but dude. I think I do think that she wore incredibly tight corsets and trained that part of her body to yeah. to go into that shape. We we've mm-hmm. seen we've seen other women like that in history. I mean, have we? Yeah. I when mean, you say we, I'm just saying I don't think I've ever seen oh, a waist yeah. like that. Just, like, just uh, last week walking down the street. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. We've seen other we've seen other times when people have, have wore corsets that really have reshaped their body. I mean, they do it all the time. The the only two women that I knew and I knew them growing up in high school, but they were heavily into um 
what was it, the uh, reenactment or anachronism of of like Renaissance festivals and that sort of thing. They would they would basically take these uh, corsets and they'd wear them all the time under their clothes and just make them tighter and tighter until they basically had no waist left. Mm. And you could, you know, one of the women I could actually put my hands around her waist and actually touch my fingers on either side of her. It seemed like that's crazy. Follow, followed by a slap. She was, uh, she was, <laughs> yes. in the, she was only in the, when she was asleep. <laughs> she was in the big 1960 hit sex kittens go to college. That was a notable oh, uh, film appearance. Great I never saw it. I have no idea. Oh, why I've don't we get that it. one on film set? Yeah, I know it. Jeez. <laughs> because this one, well, I was about to say this one ruined our booby streak, but I mean, Vampira, I mean, it wouldn't have took much to get a booby shot on that. I mean, we are seeing a lot of cleavage. <laughs> she had a booby yeah. streak. For, for a film that, that comes out that at that time, were, that was pretty boobyish, I thought. It's just that there was never a human being who lived who was willing to take their clothes off in front of Ed Wood. That's all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, all right. So well, let's see what else. Uh, oh, it's a zombie movie. It's a vampire movie. It's an alien movie. That's important to note. <laughs> I don't want to. This normally this is the part of the show where I'd start getting into the 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 overall plot line. Yeah, and it kind of starts with one sort of, but then uh, it kind of veers off, and then it looks like it's going to start over, and then it veers yeah. off again, and they try to combine the two starts into something that's supposed to be cohesive, and yeah. then it gets into this ridiculous. We have we have found the human land, and we have zuba zuba zuba. What do you think, Your Excellency? Have you brought the people to life? I mean, that stuff yeah. looked like it was filmed two <laughs> weeks later. Totally, I mean, that was. I'm bad, sorry, bad, as a bad. plot point, as a plot point, I, if I was, if I was, you know, the head honcho leader guy, and they came back, and you know, my plan was just this huge plan to, you know, build this huge army, and they came back after four or five days, and this, and he all comes happy and says, "We've revived two, <laughs> two humans." <laughs> well, they've I would only not got, come in that They've head. only got two you know electron you, guns or whatever. Either that or you would be blown away. I, well, a one would have been a miracle, but two, <laughs> this is amazing. Wow, thank you. Yeah. Proves that, that first one wasn't a fluke. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and, what the heck go were ahead. plans one through eight? Yeah, I don't you know, want to know, This is plan nine. <laughs> I don't want to well, know, but... The eighth that I, failed. They kept calling. They kept calling. Uh, you know, we have these juvenile human minds. Nothing, cl- not even close to their advanced brains no. and their amazing technology. And I'm thinking, dude, whatever. Your plan <laughs> they sucks. Us, they called us stupid idiots. I, I, I went meant to go back and count how many time uh, Eros, who was the main interactive alien guy, yeah. he must have called us stupid like about twenty times. And something else. I'm Eros, and you're stupid, yeah. and you're an idiot, dude. That is how Dudley Manlove rolls. Yeah, that's how he but rolls. The, the funny thing I was going to say about uh, that, that I thought was so weird was it's like okay, he, he mentions Plan Nine, uh, the arrows does to the to the head honcho guy, and the guy p- picks up what looks like his probably his script <laughs> off the desk, <laughs> and and reads it. Oh yes, Plan Nine. Yeah, you know it's like it's it's not it's just a little short stack of papers. You like that I'm guy like, though because he had that he had like that Zelda shield on his chest. Do you see yeah, that? Right. It's like, yeah. what the hell with, is uh, that, dude? With some sort of weapon that apparently aliens uh, are, are well aware of, too, like the, uh, the, old, the old knight's axe, yeah. axe with the uh, yeah. curved front. That was ridiculous. <laughs> I'm just thinking, whose Hall- who's Halloween box did you get into? Oh. <laughs> you really could make a drinking game for watching this film and taking oh, a drink whenever you catch an actor looking at their own script or cue cards. <laughs> yeah, didn't it feel, it, it felt a little bit like an SNL sketch, how they always kind of dart their eyes yeah. off to the side. It, it was like that. Yeah. Well, so, like, sometimes, like like again, in those horrible airplane cockpit scenes, uh, the the actors had their scripts sitting in their laps, and they would look down and while yeah. the other one was talking, and then kind of some, sometimes glance down while they were delivering their lines. That's just embarrassing. Well, the best thing about the the movie uh, for me was the uh, wrestler guy in zombie form. He's still, despite how dumb it is and all, everything else, that image of that guy still freaks me out a little bit. Something mm-hmm, totally. about the, about him clomping around. With his eyes, you know, the, uh, the, were, were the contact lenses, or did he just roll his eyes I up? Was, I was curious about that. Did we have uh, those kind of contact lenses in know, 58? Man. I don't, um, think, I don't so. think so. I don't I think wouldn't so. think so either. I think he must have been rolling his eyes back. And, well, and he's back a, he's a professional wrestler. He's a performer. He knows how to pull it off. So maybe Obviously that was it. So. I don't know. But I think Ed Wood's biggest problem in all of his movies isn't that he doesn't have ideas you can work with, because I think there's something here. I this think his biggest problem is this is a really. I think it's. I think his problem is a movie about. 
I mean, really, I mean, if you sit down and pitch this story to me and you never heard of Plan 9 before, I mean, and you didn't call it Plan 9, of course, but if you pitch it to me and said, you know, these aliens are going to come down and they're going to raise the dead as their army to, you know, to overtake the world, I'd be kind of like, mm, that sounds like a pretty good uh, okay, sci-fi well, for, geek movie. For starters, that isn't uh, that isn't what they're doing. <laughs> exactly. they're, they're trying to raise the dead to confuse us into not <laughs> developing the next level of weapon of mass destruction oh what's it called the exactly. solar solar the, the, the solar benite which uh <laughs> the solar benite which 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 i love because it was so funny because he said we want to stop you before you find the solar benite because uh we don't want you to discover it but you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna explain the whole thing to you and how it works in simple terms so your human mind can wrap around it yeah. and then go develop while it. while our two undead people are down there taking it confusing everybody i, I never exactly. understood his i never understood the alien's cockiness in the cockpit of his spaceship when they were in there with the guns pointed at him it's like we're in total control <laughs> no they a, weren't he's a space soldier <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have any control sure. at all. Look, Ed Wood's problem is mostly editing, to be honest. I mean, there were times where oh. I would be like, okay, you, you really needed to fill some time. <laughs> really? That's the thing you pick. I'm just kidding. <laughs> exactly. I'm just they just kidding. stare into that space. That was problem, yes. <laughs> Nobody turns away. They look and they look and they look. And when that one was, yeah. when the when the vampire dude, the fake Bella Lugosi, the, the, excuse me, the chiropractor was creeping up on the cop. <laughs> And they sat on that porch and did these double takes for like the next 10 minutes. I just thought, oh. dude, that's enough of that. What are you doing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And like 75 minutes of, of uh, you know, each of the three zombies walking through the – walking individually through the cemetery where they turn around and look. And then they walk this way. And then, oh, let's use some yeah. of that uh, archive footage of Bela Lugosi <laughs> in daylight. Okay, let's go back to nighttime. And, oh, here's Tor Johnson walking towards us. Yeah, I was going to say the and, alien's greatest weapon was being able to turn night to day and day to yes. night. Oh, man. The freakiest – Okay, I'm going to give you my first impression of what I thought when I saw the movie, and I'm going to give you what I read afterwards. Bring it. My first impression was, why in the world are they burying these people so fast? You know, I mean, it's like Inspector Dan Clay was killed, and then it's like they called his wife to come down to the cemetery. We already got his big fat butt here anyway. Let's go ahead and bury him now. <laughs> and so it's like it was a night burial. And I'm like, I've never been to a, <clears throat> a nighttime funeral. I don't know if you have or not. No. <clears throat> but half of them were nighttime funerals, half of them were daytime funerals. And then I come – so I kept thinking, why was all these day and night things going on? Well, went back and read, and apparently from the film to a tape transfer, there was a lot of problems with the way they were – way it was meant to be seen. In the film version, uh, it looked like night when it was supposed to look like night and it looked like day when it was supposed to look like day. So it's an exposure uh, issue or like a uh, restoration problem? Something like problem? that. I guess yeah. you compare it to that like an exposure issue. And another thing people complain about is like the, the scripts being in the scene and the boom mics being in the scene is because of the safe areas that you would usually see in a wide format screen are different than that of a 4x3, uh, which you would see on the TV. look at you doing your homework, vindicating the production. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Amazing, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm curious. I would love to have went back, be able to go back in time and see this when it was aired at a theater, and see if it was still have given me that same impression because we we're watching on the on the on the small screen, and like I said, so much was lost in translation from what I've read. Oh, I think it would have there's, been pig, it would have been pig a, dirt then, it's just as much as it's pig dirt today. Yes, Randy. As far as the right. look, yeah. go ahead. There, there there is a there is a DVD out that has yeah. the film. Uh, with a modern transfer instead of that horrible matte transfer that you're talking about, with yeah. in in the proper uh, ratio Aspect. that yeah. it was filmed in, uh, you know, across the board, and it and it allegedly looks a lot better. But why would you ever pay anyone a single penny to do that? There's no there's no reason to make this movie better looking Just, or more available. Well, isn't it one it's one of those movies though that's that's on people's list of the the best worst movie ever made. This this yeah. and like Trolls 2 and or Troll 2, oh, I guess. Man. Uh, you know, movies like that. By the way, we got to do Troll 2 on here. But anyway. Oh, we got to. <laughs> Uh, I would love to see that. When when you when 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 these kind of movies kind of just permeate the popular culture and become these legends of terribleness, in a mm -hmm. way they've they've far surpassed what Ed Wood would have ever hoped for it. Um, and I think if he was around still, he'd be going, dude, sweet. 
my movies made it. You know, oh. it's the biggest thing ever. And 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 <laughs> so he'd be like Lucas, right? He'd redo he'd be, it. He'd be all, just all new just fine stuff. with the popularity of this film. Absolutely. I mean, I would. Yeah. I would be. It, this would be a fun thing to have for a bunch of nerds coming over to the house, hanging out, having fun, and watching this horrible movie. Yeah, it only take up uh, an hour and fifteen minutes of your evening. <laughs> yeah, <Sorry>. yeah. <clears throat> if you cut out that stupid narrator guy, maybe even less. Speaking of which, oh, I've got some clips of that He was guys. my favorite thing in the movie. Yeah, oh, he, was, Brian, he was great. That's Criswell, that absolutely was my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> Jeez, you I, guys, I've got that. a totally different favorite part okay. of the movie. Thank you very much. Well, hang on to that. Uh, so let's listen to the weird introduction from this guy. We'll start with our clips. This is the narrator who appeared throughout the entire film. Check him out. Greetings, my friend. We are all interested in the future, for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. And remember, my friend, future events such as these will affect you in the future. You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. And now, for the first time, we are bringing to you the full story of what happened on that fateful day. We are giving you all the evidence based only on the secret testimony of the miserable souls who survived this terrifying ordeal. The incidents, the places. My friend, we cannot keep this a secret any longer. Let us punish the guilty. Let us reward the innocent. My friend, can your heart stand the shocking facts about Grave robbers from outer space. All right. <laughs> Can I get an amen? I played that amen, whole thing. brother. I played the whole thing so, because I wanted to show everyone this collection of no- nouns and pronouns and adjectives that meant nothing. 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 So In I, the future, I, was, you'll have the future. When the future... Yes, Randy, go ahead. That was ad-libbed, right? That was ad-libbed. I had it to had be. to have been had ad-libbed. No, we hope no. it was. His, eye, his that, eyes were moving around like he was reading. Like he looked yes. like he was reading. So, <laughs> But I think by ad lib, I think somebody wrote that down 10 minutes before or as an afterthought because, dude, we're at only at an hour here. We need an extra 15 minutes. See if you can get uh-huh. Blondie over there to read this. That's what I think. It, it felt like he was just, that's what I felt. It felt like he just kept making up one more thing. And one more thing. <laughs> Our actors are not quite ready for the stage. Yeah. <laughs> and I must, they're giving me the scene to keep going on. <laughs> My friends. my friends. <laughs> Nothing I can say can prepare you for the horror you're about to see. So should I know who that guy is? Because there's something very, very familiar no. about his voice. No, you should not know. You should never know. You, one should, should know. you shouldn't know him, but uh, he is actually a real guy. Really? He, he actually well, I existed. know. I assume he's a real guy. You mean he is oh. a real human? He was not a zombie <laughs> okay. brought to life by a space gun. He wasn't. Some uh, he was amazing. He was actually CGI a true. Effect. Yeah, like a. Uh, he was stop motion. <laughs> What's that? He's a stop motion creature. <laughs> no, he he, he, pre- he was he predicted the future. Even before this movie came out, he predicted the, this fu- the, uh he predicted the future. He was also a columnist. Yeah. So he was the real deal. How they got this guy, I don't know. I don't know either. That's pretty rough. Obviously, he's really good at it if he was in this movie. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And he didn't see this coming. Now He's got his own own website. One of my favorite by far. He has his own website still? Like, the guy's alive? He's alive. Yes. Okay, well. No, he's dead. No, 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 he's dead. He's dead. His memory lives on. (laughs) His site lives on. Yeah. Actually, actually, actually actually it's him. I know. It's actually him, and he's he's got a cape over his head. In his uh, stop, if this, that's if his wife's podiatrist, I think. <laughs> foot, her, her foot guy, <laughs> yeah, her foot guy. All right, let's. Uh, my, my favorite conversation in the movie happened between two grave diggers. Did you hear anything? I thought I did. Don't like hearing noises, especially when ain't supposed to be any. Yeah, sort of spooky like. Maybe we're getting old. Whatever it is, it's gone now. That's the best thing for us, too. Gone. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and that was their i think that was except for their uh that's pretty much their last scene so i, I don't blame them i'd probably Dude, say the same thing that stuff is gold too, are you kidding me that is freaking gold like there's no oh. <laughs> these old 50s movies whenever we pull one of these out which won't be that often but occasionally they're the best ones for my clips it's like oh, man. <laughs> oh my gosh the grave diggers that we're only two minutes into this thing and listen to what they just said let's go capture that audio mm, i don't like let's hearing noises in. yeah i hate hearing sounds <laughs> yeah anything audible it, it <laughs> makes it through my ears to my brain <laughs> <laughs> kind of spooky like <laughs> uh um, po- the police inspector the way, oh go ahead 
You very accidentally caught the best acting in the film right yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, that was totally. the best acting in the entire film. I'm going to give you that. Mm. I actually think the, uh, the the alien leader with the Zelda shield on his chest, I actually think he was all right, but it may have been because he was really British, and I, yeah. I kind of fall for that. So yeah. British actors always seem like they're acting better than they maybe probably are, but I kind of bought into him. I felt like he was being earnest, and that other guy should just be selling like potato chips and cigarettes. The, the Eros guy, <laughs> totally. Because that man love guy, his his kind of his kind of thing was that very stereotypic middle of the radio show announcer. Yes, we'll oh, be right man. back with our oh. band after this word from Marlboro. You know, exactly. Yes. And what was he doing in this thing? Because he did the same voice. No, I actually liked it though. It was kind of it was kind of odd but mesmerizing. Yeah, we're going to confuse the Earthlings with. Zombies that we raise from the dead <laughs> with our fancy stupid. Guns. I love when film at eleven. I love when he explained. I, I don't know if you caught captured the audio or not of oh, him yeah. explaining how the weapon works to the girl that he was oh, with. Oh yeah, dude, that's a Did good, that's that good stuff. No, Definitely, I got that one coming. Uh, before Why are you we, explaying that to me? Before, I have a gun too. I, I, before we I do that, you. however, let's talk about the police inspector who kept aiming the gun at everybody and uh, sort oh, of painted God, pointed up at himself. Good. Uh, I don't remember what he said here. I just remember liking this line, so here it is. Minutes later, the police, led by Inspector Daniel Clay, arrived at the scene. Who found them? The man and girl. Medical uh, examiner been around yet? Just left. The morgue wagon ought to be along most any time. You get their statement? Yeah, as much as we could. They're pretty scared. Finding a mess like this ought to make anyone frightened. Have one of the boys take the guy and the girl back to town. You take Josh. <laughs> okay, Inspector. What are you going to do? Look around a little. It's pretty dark out there. Once you get beyond the range of those lights, you won't be able to see your hand in front of your face. I will get one of the flashlights from the patrol car. Okay, be careful, Clay. I'm a big boy, not Johnny. I get, I get flashlight from patrol <laughs> car. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he he reminds me of when you ask the the reclusive old gentleman who's been a widower for twenty five years at church yeah. to do a scripture reading. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what he reminds me of. He gets it up was there, like and, that. yeah, like he's not used to reading much. You know, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like like that's who you want in your film: an actor who doesn't know how to you know read Act, lines. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can't read lines. I get one from patrol car. And I, what I like <laughs> about it the best is that he'll stumble in between his sentences. And, and they didn't cut it. No, no, not, no, no, I'm no. not asking. I'm not asking him to do it again. The guy's a huge. giant wrestler guy. They're not going to ask. He's like him to 400 do it pounds. Forget about it. Cut. Can <laughs> yeah, we do that he's again? He's taking a few uh, blows to the head. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I like again. He's the he was the compelling factor in the whole movie for me. Both from a this is terrible aspect to a he really kind of pulled it off with the zombie thing. I liked him. Yeah. He was my favorite bit. He uh, was. I, I agree. Is that uh, the bad guys? He was my favorite because Vampira. I mean, all she really done was she was hiding behind those those bushes and she would just look at you and that'd be it yeah with her freaky long fingers that uh, i couldn't tell where freaky. the where the nails began and the fingers ended yeah yeah she was all right i guess she you know she didn't i guess that character was hers and seems a little weird it's kind of like having i don't know like ernest p whirl in your movie or <laughs> you know what i mean like having a character yeah. like Pee Wee herman in your regular movie yeah, yeah. But imagine if Pee Wee Herman was just standing outside your window looking. <laughs> just kind of staring. Every now and then you go to the window and throw the blinds open. There he is staring. You're like, okay, I feel better now. That's yeah. good. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. That's the way he's supposed to be. So I'm going to be happy. Paging Mr. Herman. Paging Mr. Herman. Uh, Mr. Herman. <laughs> Mr. Herman. <laughs> All right. Uh, they are among <laughs> us. Here's our mystery. This is our mystery clip of the week. Jeez, Brian, I didn't know you're such a student of the uh, the Pee Wee Herman thing. <laughs> it was oh, dead Herman. on. It was man. amazing. Oh kind of freaking me out. Next thing you know, you're going to get busted in a porno theater or something. <laughs> yeah, but let's hear your Dudley man love. Yeah, do it. Yeah, no, I can't. I can't do that. <laughs> All right. I, uh, but you will hear shortly. Uh, they are I'll among go. us. Mystery clip. No idea what it meant, but I'll play it now. I saw a flying saucer. Saucer? You mean the kind from up there? Yeah, well, it's counterpart. It was shaped like a huge cigar. Dan and either saw it too. And when it passed over, the whole compartment lighted up with a blinding glare. Then there was a tremendous wind that practically knocked us off our course. Well, did you report it? Yeah. I radioed in immediately, and they said, we'll keep it quiet until you land. And as soon as we landed, Big Army Brass grabbed us and made us swear to secrecy about the whole thing. Oh, it burns me up. And a Big Army Brass, huh? <laughs> see? Yeah. Burns me up, see? <laughs> Big Army Brass. 
<laughs> I would be more. I would be a lot more pissed off that I worked as a pilot and I had to fly a plane that doesn't have chairs. Yeah. Oh man. What, or, they, or a, <laughs> or a or steering a column, or what the hell? Uh, like a, something other than a piece of cardboard and a couple of drapes. Maybe what that. are you sitting on? Are they squatting in the cockpit? I don't get it. That, uh, every time. Yeah, and that guy. I mean, that guy was an actor. Actor. He he could actually he pull off acting. I think this is a terrible movie. But the other guy sitting next to him is like, oh yeah, look at that over there. There's something <laughs> out the window. Hey everybody, I should be the chiropractor. I mean, he was terrible. God, was only, awesome. only bad part about the good actor was he couldn't say Solarbonite. So, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really pay attention. Did he struggle with that? Yeah, he said Solarbonite. Oh, <laughs> so, so I, he tried to say it really fast. Like if I say it fast, they won't notice. I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. Now this next clip goes to Brian's introduction. Uh, Brian Dunaway's introduction today. This is Colonel Edwards doing his thing. Colonel Tom Edwards in charge of saucer field activities was to make the greatest decision of his career. He made that decision. Colonel Edwards gave the signal to fire. <laughs> Love that guy. I don't know what the crap's going on with saucer field activities, but uh, and I thought that's, that's was like the greatest job ever. Well, Ed Wood was like, "Where can I steal war footage and then put it in my movie right. in between well, this terrible shot of this guy?" Yes, Brandon. And every every piece of footage of uh, I, well, I'm not going to give it the 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 good grace to call it stock footage because this is yeah. like this is footage that no no good stock footage user at any newscast would ever choose to put up on television. <laughs> but, but this, I mean, this is like, uh, it's like 17 disparate bits of yeah. people firing all sorts of interesting mortar weapons that were Which probably never awesome. mass produced. Yeah. In places that didn't match. Right. That, and so right. as a result, as a, as a edited, you know, from one clip to another, you had different uh, qualities of lighting and yeah. the film itself, like there were some shots where the film itself was really damaged. And so you're going from a fairly good looking shot to a shot that has lots and lots of hairs and scratches on it. Mm -hmm. like yeah. it Newsreel footage. And yeah, yeah. that's where I started. Even, even back then, those weapons were scary as crap. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> they, 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 would load up, they would load up rocket powered mortars on the back of a truck exactly. and just have them just firing over the driver's head. Yeah. Jeez. That's pretty amazing. Oh. I, I just, I don't know what war that was from. Maybe the Korean conflict, probably. It's my guess. Some of it was like training footage from the U.S. <laughs> as old as Minnesota, those looked probably from World War II. Yeah. <laughs> Weird choices, but uh, that doesn't, doesn't really end there. Uh, if you want to know what Plan 9 is, Now's your chance. Have your report. We had to pull in here to Space Station 7 for regeneration. We're returning to the planet Earth <laughs> immediately thereafter. What progress has been made? We contacted government officials. They refuse our existence. What plan will you follow now? Plan 9. It's been absolutely impossible to work through these Earth creatures. Their soul is too controlled. Plan 9. Ah, oh, yes. Plan 9 deals with the resurrection of the dead. You attempted any of this plan as yet? Yes, Excellency. How successful has it been? We have risen too so far. We shall be just as successful on more. We have risen too so far. <laughs> and here's the really of the weather. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and now a bouncy tune from our in-house band. <laughs> I love that guy. Okay, now Randy, or not Randy, Brian uh, Dunaway, you mentioned, did I have well, the fine. clip of the, <laughs> of, the <laughs> of Eros uh, Man Love Joy Toy, what's his name? Eros. Manlove. Eros, With I Dudley guess. Manlove. Yeah. Danley Manlove, yeah, that's yeah. it. Manlove Joy Toy, don't forget it, write it down. Um, he <laughs> tries to explain the electrode gun to this chick. Yeah. And it is my probably favorite conversation outside of the Gravediggers. What do you think will be the next obstacle the Earth people will put in our way? Well, as long as they can think, we'll have our problems. But those whom we're using cannot think. They are the dead brought to a simulated life by our electrode guns. You know, it's an interesting thing when you consider the Earth people who can think are so frightened by those who cannot. The dead. <laughs> okay, Dude, just, come on, just that, shut up and let's get on with that it. That dialogue <laughs> is awesome. What kind of obstacles do you think the humans will put in our way? Uh, maybe live people? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, mm, I, had, I had a lot of fun with this movie in this way, and maybe this is as good a time as any to talk about kind of what we overall got out of it whenever we got to the space stuff and it just got sort of goofy and 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 kind of reminded me of the whole flash gordon vibe and all that 
that's when I thought the movie succeeded and was just fun. I mean, it was still terrible, but mm-hmm. it was fun. It was fun listening to him just say stupid, ridiculous things to her and explain the plan and stand yeah. inside of that thing. It was supposedly a saucer, but on the outside looked like a damn building with a with a ladder on it. And and you know what's funny? I thought I I I, I damned that part. I said, "Damn it, that part!" But um, because because I was like, "Okay, this is obviously a square building, and it's supposed to be on the bottom of a saucer." Yeah. But if yeah. you look in in some of the uh in some of the models when they're when they're floating down, they're what? actually square on the bottom. What? And I had, I had to go back and take it back. Dude, those saucers <laughs> were probably about two inches wide and were on wires all the time. But, There's some stupid but, toy. Yes, I know, but the bottom the landing platform was square. Are you just, making that just up? Just like the door. <laughs> I think you're making that up. I'm hovering not over making every it major, up. Over, over every major television <laughs> studio in Hollywood. Yeah. Exactly, because that's why I was worried about that, because I was like, oh, there's NBC. Yeah, yeah. ABC, okay. Don't want to leave CBS out, dude. No, there's CBS. Good job. <laughs> hey, uh, there's a very sexy part of the movie. I don't know if you guys saw this. Very sexy. little talk here. A little bit of pillow talk, actually. <laughs> going to play this clip for you. Uh, tell the kids to leave the room just for a mm-hmm. minute. Here's a very steamy scene in this film. Besides, I'll be in bed before half an hour is gone with your pillow beside me. My pillow? Well, I have to have something to keep me company while you're away. Sometimes in the night when it does get a little lonely, I reach over and touch it. Then it doesn't seem so lonely anymore. (laughs) (laughs) That was going to actually be my opening. Yeah, on that yeah. on on the show but reaching over and touching your pillow yeah i was gonna talk about your pillow i was, I was actually gonna yeah say scott's pillow but, brian yeah. likes to quote unquote reach over and quote touch my quote yeah, pillow touch, <laughs> touch my pillow mm, right if this was a video podcast and you could have done air quotes it would have worked out yeah, i was actually wow. doing yeah. those actually that's the reason why i backed off i'm doing yeah. them right wink, now wink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll just emote it with audio clues uh okay another great advancement during the 1950s was of course the language computer. We've received messages from their spaceships. For a while, it came in as just a lot of jumbled noise. And now, sir? Well, since they first uh, tried contact with us by radio, we've developed a language computer, a machine that breaks down any language to our own. I think it's about time you heard these recordings. This is Eros, a space soldier from a planet of your galaxy. I fully realize our language differences. However, I also know you finally have perfected the Dicto Robotary, or as you on Earth call it, the language computer. Oh, the Dicto Robotary. I see. Oh, that's such a worse course. name. Yeah. <laughs> at you first we thought it was computer. <laughs> we was picking up transmissions, and first we thought it was some dolphins going. Yeah. <laughs> then we got the Dicto Translator. <laughs> and we figured out what they were saying. Dicto Robotary. Hey, like, hey do you think we should? You think we should go back and translate the previous messages they sent us? Yeah. <laughs> nah. Nah, no. Nah. Why not? No need. What, nah. I, what so I like is... How does our language computer know what the word dictalobiter means? <laughs> I <know. laughs> what, I, what I really like about that is it's almost like a double-edged insult. So you got Eros getting on there going, Oh, you're finally smart enough to make this language computer. But if you were really smart, you'd know it was called the Dicto Robotorter or whatever. <laughs> We've got three just in my office. <laughs> so stupid, dude. So and stupid. Then, and then in that same message, he doesn't finish. <laughs> no. He doesn't finish. He, he stops before the message. You know, seriously. Like there's just yeah. Uh, they cut if, it off. If you don't, it's it's something like if you do not respond to our request soon, we are going to. You know, this is our <laughs> final. M- Mm, y'all still recording? Mm, mm. Message. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have one more clip. This is about the history of the bomb. Brian alluded to it. Mm. And now it, here it is, naked for your enjoyment. Why is it so important that you want to contact the governments of our Earth? Because all you of Earth are idiots. Now you just hold on, Buster. No, you hold on. First was your firecracker, a harmless explosive. Then your hand grenade. Okay, can I just pause that for a second? <laughs> yeah. His, he's saying that we started with a firecracker. Yeah. When? As a, as a weapon. Sure yeah, yeah, as a weapon. It started when caveman made the first M80 and blew up a mailbox. I mean, what the crap? <laughs> I remember I, I back did. in WW1 when we were throwing firecrackers <laughs> we at still, the enemy. We still roared horses. We'd ride into enemy territory <laughs> and 
Throw a bunch of lady fingers in and see what would happen. <laughs> All, All right. we had were snakes. I'll, keep, uh, I'll continue where this was. They began to kill your own people a few at a time. Then the bomb. Then a larger bomb. Many people are killed at one time. Then your scientists stumbled upon the atom bomb. Then the hydrogen bomb, where you actually explode the air itself. The only explosion left is the solar benite. And then you went back to a smaller bomb. Exactly. The Solibanite. <laughs> Solibanite. That was dumb, stupid, lame. Uh, and again, in the right brain, in thought. the right hands though, you could it's an interesting concept that man has yeah. is just creating greater and greater ways to destroy themselves and then some other alien race is smart enough to know that crap they're on the verge of discovering this other thing, we should intervene. That is a that's a premise I can play with. Mm-hmm. You know? But the presentation here and I, I'm not even going to blame it on old school techniques. You know, next week we're reviewing a film that I think fares a lot better because it's oh, yeah. made with people who give a crap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And despite Big the difference. Yeah. And despite the look and the feel and the sound of older films, um, there's something there of, of substance and, you know, that you can sort of chew on. But this is just what? And what about the zombies again? And where was Bella Lugosi? I mean, the guy was. He, he was bones. Oh, by the way, on the on the uh, videotape release of the film. Yeah. He's credited as almost starring. Oh, <laughs> it literally says awesome. almost starring Bella Lugosi, which is kind of terrible. Poor guy. Yeah, that's horrible. I know. I feel bad about. Oh that. yeah, I'm sure. We're sorry to any of his living relatives who are <laughs> the listening Lugosi now. The Lugosi Foundation, who continues <laughs> on for Dracula issues everywhere. All right. Well, film sec is almost starring Tom Merritt. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. All right, uh, let's get to our uh, film sack checklist. We have this every week, and uh, this is the things that are in most movies we watch. We need to make sure if they show up here. Uh, did anybody barf? Nope, no one barfed in nope. movies back then. Just me. Yeah, <laughs> just a little in your mouth. I think I barfed a little. Uh, booby, sort of, the vampira chick. Mm-hmm. Some kinda. cleavage. Yeah, a little bit. No, I mean, you know, not full-on uh, exposure. Not really. Not, not really. really worth uh, renting the movie for there. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this doesn't have... Not uh, unless you're in those... Really small waist, if that's your thing. Yes. I do. Yeah. This Think of the money a... she saves on belts. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just uses a little. What? What? I don't even know what you'd get that small. Well, you cut. You know, you take a normal belt, cut it in half. Look at that. You got two belts. Oh, two two belts. for one. Nice job. <laughs> Stereotypes: cops and military were the big two here, I believe. Oh, oh yes. Big army brass. Mm-hmm. Big army brass always sticking their nose and things. <laughs> Decapitation: not one. No, nope. I was just deskeletization. For one. Yeah, deskeletization. I guess <laughs> that was that was pretty incredible, actually. Yeah, yeah. that was, was the one time in the film when I went, "Oh, they actually did something that entertained me." They threw the yeah. cloak down. And there's a skeleton. I love yeah, it. And they got it from like the science department at the at Berkeley or something. As, like, as yeah. yet another method to try and confuse those crazy humans. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna turn him into a skeleton. Oh crap! I can't turn him back. So I guess that yeah. one's used. What do you think, Chief? <laughs> I'm totally confused. Uh, then we got let's see somebody peeing no no peeing guys uh, bad guy with a theme or sound sound or song sort of a vampira hat yeah anytime they showed up they had, yeah, kind of they had a, yeah. like a really long ah. whatever uh, yeah. uh, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi type nope which I think this movie was less of a movie because of you need a Kenobi type yeah yeah Colonel, Colonel Edwards this movie needed so much though <laughs> yeah Colonel Edwards was kind of my Obi Wan in this movie. So. You really Your father think? wanted me to give you this weapon. Look, I can poke my hat up with it. I can jab it in my shoulder. I'll wave it around. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. I love that scratching his. Who made you right here? I think I'll use my revolver to scratch it. Uh, animal or robot as comedy relief? Uh, not really. Aliens were a kind of that. They were kind of robotic. Yeah, and they were kind of funny. You know, I guess yeah, the flying saucers kind of... were comic relief. Yeah, that's, that's true. They were kind of a robot. Yes. Uh, kid named Especially Billy. They were on fire. Kid named uh-huh. Billy, Bobby, or Buddy? Nope, no kids. Not a kid, just just uh, Billy. Yeah, and finally, I don't think, oh, I don't think films this old can apply to the the list. Yeah, the list doesn't do as well. And there's Danny, no, no question about it. Dan- Danny was kind of a child. Who was? Dan- oh yeah, the, the co-pilot. We can give him that. Co-pilot. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, it's kind of like what's the closest equivalent to? And then finally, in this one, I don't think we have any answer for, and that is, do we have a cave that looks like a vagina? <laughs> 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 uh, but and I wrote on here a note, no, but the whole movie kind of turned out to be one. So, uh, mm, oh, yeah. oh nice. zing, zing, yeah, <laughs> female <laughs> genitalia joke. Ba-ding. All right. So if you guys had to sum up this movie. Mm-hmm. in some sort of Twitter post, the things you love, the things you hate, 
How would you how would you sort of roundly uh, or soundly round this up into a nice little package? Let's start with Randy. Randy, go ahead. I always see, I always go with an element from the film lately with my Twitter posts. I'm going to have to stop doing that, but I just can't get over the headline on the newspapers. I would Twitter saucer scene over Hollywood. Yeah, that is awesome. That's my <laughs> Pick, that's the best picked thing up by drunk guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Very nice. Good job, uh, Brian Ibbett. Uh, I'd say uh, here's my barrel. Here's my fish, and here's my shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. Very good, uh, very good. Mr. Brian Dunaway. Okay. Uh, I actually type these in Twitter to make sure they'll fit. Oh, uh, nice. Listen, <laughs> let's see you make a better movie with 1950s technology, $60,000, and a minute's worth of footage of Bella Lugosi. Wow. For a guy that's... that complained to us all week about this movie, you are the biggest apologist for this film today. I am, indeed. That's nice. I like it. Someone needs to stand up for it. Somebody. Uh, wrong with that? Why? Why does anyone need to? I keep wanting to ask Scott Johnson, why do you want this to be improved on or remade or stood I up for know. so bad? Like, Isn't, well, Brian found a remake, right? Brian Dunaway, you yeah. found oh, there's a remake. A remake. Yeah. yeah, there's two There's two remakes in the plan, but there's only, both of them are independent. Just like in the, uh, just like this movie, this is an independent film. Yeah. Uh, there's two independent filmmakers out there making remakes of this. Uh, one is further along in production, apparently, because there's a full on trailer out there for it. If you look for uh, Plan 9, uh, remake trailer, you'll find it out there on Google. And there's another one, but it's just basically text and says, hey, if you like Plan 9, you'll really like this movie. <laughs> mm. Well, it's in the yeah. tradition then. Sounds like they're not yeah. steering too far from the tree here. No. Or that's not a good saying. Anyway, I'm <laughs> going to tell you what you missed while you blinked during this movie. Best co-star name ever, Dudley Manlove. No. Oh. Guy in charge of wardrobe was named Dick Cheney. Something I noticed in the credits. <laughs> yep, I did not know that. Yeah, I didn't I, notice I noticed that. it. Dick Cheney made wardrobe. Oh, um, see, that could be the guy who said, "Hey, wave that gun around. If you shoot yourself in the face, we'll just say you're hunting." Yeah, yeah. that's right. Indeed. It probably was really Dick Cheney. He's old enough to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, quick tip: If you're going to get scared and run out of the house, make sure you run through the cemetery across the street. Really? Mm. Yeah. That's the safest place to be. Uh, With in these this flimsy cardboard tombstones. Yep. In this world, day and night at the same time, unless Brian's right about it. <laughs> whatever. Uh, best space or best space door opening ever. Can you see that oh, awesome yes. door while the, you can see it kind of uh, jerking open? While two guys I pull the, turn the washing machine knob to get it open. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I appreciate the sound effect. I don't know how they. I don't know if they were banging oh, on the saw. Oh, and it went on forever. The sound effect went on and on and on. You're like, yeah. how long does it take to open a door? Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard metal like this. Doing, doing, doing. And lastly, <laughs> the bottom of that ship is a damn house, unless you believe Brian Dunaway. Mm-hmm. Which could be, yeah. Yeah. Well, of course it was. Every time they were in that ship, they were just in some freaking room with windows on it. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it lowers. That house part lowers out of the bottom of the saucer section. Yeah. I have to validate this movie. Yeah. Leave and me alone. You're, and, you, and you think aliens are all using oscilloscopes uh, yeah. frequently? And I a, think, I actually think they're using. <laughs> uh, Wobble warp drive, and that's the reason why the saucers are doing like that. Wobble warp drive. <laughs> it's, just, it's the illusion of hanging by a thread. The best one, though, is the car. It's when the car like would drive. A washing machine could kind of fly if it was offload, you know what I mean? When the, when the cars would drive and they would show three saucers out in front of the car, you could tell yeah. it was wires connected to the car. Like Those and these small models. Incredible. I love yeah. that, dude. That was a great yeah. cheapo effect. Yeah. I mean, the other ones with strings, those are stupid. But when he's when he's driving along and you're trying to show that ah we're in our car and there's three saucers going as fast as we are outside, that was a great yeah. effect. I like that. Uh, all right, well there you go, folks. Scott Fletcher, of course, likes to sum up these movies in a quote or two. He's going to give us this one this week for Plan Nine from Outer Space. A flying saucer? You mean the kind from up there? <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> That's a brilliant one. That brilliant. That Thank was, you, Scott Fletcher, that. for that. Really appreciate it. I'm going to recommend people see Plan 9 from Outer Space. I think you just at least need to put this down as something you've done. Get mm-hmm. it out of the way. Finish it off. Don't wonder what you're missing. I was surprised Good at luck. how many Watch sci-fi fans I talked to had not seen it. So it was uh, yeah. very interesting. So, yeah, go out and see it. Yeah, I agree. Brian, do you, would you recommend it? People should see it? Dunaway? If it, Dunaway, I would say yes, see it. And... Uh, and you'll hate yourself for it later, but <laughs> oh, now you're not apologizing for it anymore. But no, but it'll you'll 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 have a greater appreciation now. You'll know what all those jokes are about. Okay, and look, that's the reason why I watch a lot of things. We look to Randy for the even hand here. We look to him for the for the grounded, level-eyed, you know, sort of this. 
in the in the line of bad films, you 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 go in knowing it's a really really bad film. So I think it's a, it, even among bad films, it's an acquired taste. Mm. Yeah, this is one of this is one of those movies where I wouldn't tell bad film lovers to watch it unless they're the sort that, like like Brian Dunaway just said, wants to uh, know where you know some of the some of the worst stuff and some of the best jokes that followed it came from. I, it's it's not you can kind of imagine bad stuff and save yourself watching this but like i said earlier hey it's an hour and 15 minutes you know? yeah i mean you mm. could it's like two episodes of seinfeld man just go do it watch it and here's the thing if you're a completionist bad movie watcher you have this has to be in your arsenal mm-hmm. oh, totally. so yeah, please absolutely. so please go yeah see there, there's a reason why the very first thing that mike mike nelson did when he came up with riff tracks was Plan Nine from Outer Space. Oh, you yeah. know, he, yeah. it was it was one of those films that they just, I'm sure they desperately wanted to do on Mystery Science Theater for whatever mm-hmm. reason they couldn't. And you know, when he came up with this idea of sort of skirting the the rules with rip, riff tracks, I mean, yeah. right out of the gate, Plan Nine, obvious, obviously one of the most uh, easy, easiest to make fun of films ever. Could yeah. not agree more. So, I, I give this a Plan Five out of a possible Plan Nine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I like that rating system. I will give it a yeah. plan. I'll give it a plan seven. Out of, plan seven out of plan nine. Yeah. What would you? You give would it? think it would be the de facto plan nine of plan nine, but <laughs> nope. I have to give it a lower plan than that. Uh, Ibit, how would you? What would you rate it? I'd give it a uh, a plan three out of a district nine. Oh, oh mm-hmm. hey, that's a different scale. Yes. That's, a, that's much more granular. Um, <laughs> Randy, how would you rate it? I'm, in that I'm scale? going to give it an I out of a V. <laughs> mm. All right. I I out of a V. Excellent. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of uh, FilmSack. Thank you guys all for being here. Really appreciate it. Don't forget the website. It's FilmSack.com. The Twitter is the Twitter is FilmSack. And you can also send us email, feedback, and movie recommendations to FilmSack at gmail.com. Our next movie coming right up next week will be the original Fly. The old Fly, mm. which I still think was originally black and white. You'll hear us argue about that next week. Uh, so... <laughs> So make sure you check that out. <laughs> Until next time, for me, for Scott, uh, for me, for Scott, for Scott, for Brian, for Randy, and for Brian, have a wonderful week. We'll see you next time. Excellent. Mm. It's alive. Amazing. It's alive. We all showed yeah. up at the same time. That's great. Oh, good. I yeah. was afraid that I was holding you guys up. You were. <laughs> Yeah, well, whatever. Don't tell, don't tell him. Usually you are. I always Aww. think. I always think. Who's what guilt? is what is Ibit going to do to thwart my plans tonight? <laughs> I am too busy going to get flashlight from Patrol Car. <laughs>